we made it. Final session, everybody. How are we doing? Yeah? Okay, 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 we're still here, good. Thank you so much. Well, we have um, a very, very, very special guest with us here now. His name is David Grudman. He is a renowned hospitality innovator and entrepreneur. I'm sure he needs no introduction to any of you. He is the man behind some of the world's most iconic restaurants, nightclubs, a hotel. He is a native Floridian. I've never said that word out loud before, so I hope I, I did it justice. And he is just, a, as we would say in Australia, he's a legend. So please welcome to the stage, David Grootman, everybody. <laughs> did they warn you that it was a very long walk up here? Great. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good. Did you have to travel far today? <laughs> yeah, I think two minutes. It's great. <laughs> Fantastic. I drove past uh, your building. It's bloody gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. It's a bit special. It's a bit special. So I just did a very quick introduction to you. I was wondering if you would mind sharing a little bit more of a detailed introduction to yourself for our audience, just, you know, your career, what you're all about. Yeah, uh, I'm the founder of Groot Hospitality. It's a collective of restaurants, nightclubs, hotels, and soon-to-be resorts. Uh, my first restaurant was Komodo. My first nightclub was Live at the Fountain Blue. I've had that for 15 years in story. Uh, I opened up Swan with Pharrell. I just opened up Gecko with an artist named Bad Bunny. Uh, I opened my first hotel called The Good Time on 6th and Washington with, with Pharrell again. And, um, uh, next week, I'm opening Komodo in Dallas. I have Poppy Steak. If you've been to Poppy Steak, it's, it's an amazing place. It, uh, 93 seats, does $23 million a year. Komodo is the number one grossing independent restaurant in America. And um, yeah, I think I have like 22 openings in the next two years, and it's, it's a lot. But I try to make an ecosystem for myself more than anything. I try to have everything kind of feeding each other. And uh, I'm based in Miami. What does that mean when you say an ecosystem feeding each other? So, um, you know, you hope that the restaurant feeds the nightclub and the nightclub you go and stay at, at one of my hotels and then, the, you know, the cycle keeps going. And we have touching points in all of Miami, whether it's Coconut Grove with the Key Club or South Beach with Poppy Steak and Good Time and Live and Story or in the Design District with Swan. Uh, I'm trying to be this touching point for everybody. And in fact, where I'm opening up in a couple months, Casa Donna, it's gonna be a 50-50 deal with me and Tal Group, and my best friends. We always wanted to do something together. It's right around the corner, it's called Casa Donna. Amazing, and what's the red thread that connects everything? I mean, we definitely have a DNA that, that people know what they're gonna get when they come to one of our places. Everything's shareable, it creates energy and community at the table. There's always some kind of music and it gravitates up. They know it's just not a simple uh, sit-down dinner. Love that. I've also heard you describe yourself as a natural host. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in the hospitality business, and we know that hospitality is not just serving food. It's making, it's creating experiences for people, and, and it's what they leave with, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, I love hosting people. I love serving people. So that's for me is the number one. Where did it come from? Were you just born like this? I mean, if we want to go deep, I mean, my parents were people. divorced when I was six. I probably felt insignificant. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But we could, you know, I mean, there's years of therapy to go over something like that. <laughs> Sorry, we've only got 30 minutes, so we'll move on to the next question then. <laughs> so the theme of our conference, um, or our summit, I should say, conference makes it sound corporate and boring, doesn't it? Um, is the fact that Booking.com is all about making travel easier, but it's people like you and our audience who are making travel unforgettable. So what does an unforgettable travel experience mean to you? So... I love going, you know, listen, I have like a great tour guide in Rome that takes me to all the underground stuff and he's kind of messed me up now to whenever I go to another city and I meet with a tour guide, I'm like, okay, I don't want to see the commercial, it's take me, and they look at me with like crazy eyes. I love when, you know, you create an experience for somebody, whether it's pairing a, a, even pairing a wine with a food or a dessert or something that they've never had. And that's kind of creating those, those little experiences that add up to a big experience. When you have these people in different markets that could show you something that you, that's off the beaten path, that they feel like, that you feel like you got the key to go see something different. I think, to me, that's what an amazing experience is. Mm. So is that your secret sauce, would you say, delivering the unexpected? <laughs> I love the unexpected, but listen, you know, you never know who you're gonna see or what you're gonna experience when you come to one of my places, and I think that's what keeps them fresh and keeps people coming back over and over again. Okay, 
I also read, maybe um, I should stop telling you what your secret source is, but that you're really into immersive experiences. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's from the second you walk up to that rope is how we kind of treat the guest, you know? For us, it's, and you know, my secret sauce is the fact that, you know, we've been doing this for so long that the people that stand next to me have now passed that on to somebody else that's been standing next to them. It's really our team that's really my secret sauce more than anything. And that they all know that, you know, when you walk in the door, you have to leave your, your bad weather behind. You know, we're on stage, we're creating a party, we're creating an experience for people. So we have to make sure that you're smiling, you're happy and everything like that. Whatever goes on in your day, that's, that's behind. And so what do you think people are looking for these days when it comes to hospitality and experiences? So, I mean, let's be honest. The first thing people look for is social media. Is there an experience that's going to give them a social media, FOMO, digital situation? And of course, you know, we, cre we, we design spaces that there's moments for people in our spaces that could be magnified through social media and, and, and all that. The food presentation, the plates, the, the way table side service happens, from the uniforms to the music to everything that you see and feel has to be, be able to be transferred to the digital place as well. Oh, that's amazing. So you're sort of designing for amazing experience and the digital version of yeah, that. Yeah, because you want it to live past those four walls. You want it to be magnified to everybody. That's how you build a brand. That's how we build brands. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Okay, so we've done today social media amazing experiences, but what about tomorrow? Could you do a little trend forecast for us? What, what, Just in terms of amazing experiences, what people are going to be looking for? I mean, people will spend money on experiences. We know that, right? They, uh, they may not buy the designer clothes, but they'll, they'll pay for the experience, especially coming out of COVID, as you know. Yeah. Um, I think people want things that you, money just can't buy. And I think like going in the DJ booth at Live or something like that, I think that's where you're gonna see rewards points. You know, constantly I get calls from credit card companies. What can we do that, that, that money can't buy? Mm, yeah, that's nice, okay. Very nice. Um, and how do you stay relevant? Is this a, a, like a deliberate thing that you're constantly thinking about innovation? Or? So we, I stay relevant by look, looking to see what's going on in the underground and what the youth is doing because that, that's what becomes pop culture super quick. Okay. Uh, also, I don't try to follow the trends because if I follow the trends, they move so quick, I lose them. So I try to see what's going on in the underground. I try to put them in my big shiny box and I try to set the trend myself. Yeah, exactly. I think you're more the trendsetter, right, than the trend follower. Okay. Um, so the Good Time Hotel, you mentioned Pharrell earlier. I'm sure who in the room has heard of Pharrell? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you started the Good Time with Hotel, um, with Pharrell, sorry, it was your first hotel venture. You opened it in 2021. Can you talk to us about um, how you went about envisaging your first hotel and bringing that to life? So, you know, the developers came to me and said, listen, we have this property on Six in Washington. We, we hired a great designer, his name is Ken Folk. And Ken Folk, is very, he did Swan for us. He's very famous for doing whimsical spaces. And being that it's not on the ocean and they're micro rooms, we knew that we wanted to activate the the pool and, and the common space. So, you know, he gave us a really great, and we built a whole pink library just for social media. Again, so you go to the good time, you go to the library, everything's pink in this library, and it's one of the most Instagrammable things in Miami. So again, you wanna kinda do this, but we wanted to activate a pool because people come to Miami, they wanna be outdoors a lot, especially, you know. Not last night. Exactly. Not last, and not today. Today is terrible. Today. Uh, it's a good time to have a conference in Miami. <laughs> yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> So that's kind of what, and now, you know, we took the original uh, three towers of Atlantis in the Bahamas and we're creating a new resort there called Somewhere Else. I'm like, somewhere else, somewhere else. And that's kind of a Pharrell name, so I don't really ask questions, I just kind of go with it. And it's, <laughs> it works. And also, good time, he wanted it as one word and not two words. And the reason why he did that, because Six in Washington, when I first got to Miami Beach, was the best block in all of Miami Beach. It's where all the clubs and, and cool bars were at on that one block and then it became the worst block in Miami Beach. So he wanted to change the narrative of that block by calling it the good time and using good time as one word. Oh, that's cool, okay. What would be your biggest lesson that you've had since being a hotelier? Uh, to, to keep the rooms clean. I mean, it's, it's constant, like one thing for the restaurants and stuff like that, but you know, when someone comes and stays nights with you, it's a different kind of experience. Mm. That's amazing. And you're, you just mentioned the Somewhere Else resort that you're opening in yeah. uh, the Bahamas. Anything that you can tell us about how you're going to deliver different type of experiences there, or is it a top, top secret for now? No, listen, guys, we're all about activations at the end of the day. So we're, we have some great, the pool's going to come alive. 
Uh, but we're also, do, we're also doing stuff like biohacking. We're going to have a biohacking area because we think that's what people also are really into, uh, especially here in Miami and everywhere else I see that's going on is these biohackers, these IV lounge, not just IV lounges, but just being able to get to different stuff. Uh, people are going crazy for this right now. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. I also, um, I think one of the things you're most famous for is leveraging the power of celebrity. Sure. So, and I also read that you used to go via the publicist, that that was your, your trick. So, so I would, you know, um, I think celebrity and, you know, doing events with different brands and using their brand equity to kind of build your brand is always a great thing. Um, she's talking about, I would always bring different publicists, celebrity publicists down for the weekend in Miami. This is before it was such a big celebrity hangout. And, and you know, no one treats the publicists very nicely. They always kind of yeah. brush them aside and I treat them like they're the celebrity. But I also try to treat everyone like they're the celebrity too. When I'm at a dinner with a celebrity, I talk to everybody at the table, not just the celebrity, obviously. Uh, and it, it, it just works out okay. So is it the same tip, go for the publicist? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's still sustained. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Um, so what would your advice be for the people in the room then if you were going to tell them how to think about anything that you haven't mentioned so far in terms of delivering amazing experiences, things that other people are not thinking about that maybe you are? I mean, I think one of the, the, the secrets that we do, not secrets, but one of the secrets to our success is that I'm very detail-oriented, guys. I, I walk into a venue, I'm looking to see if the light bulbs are out, I'm looking to see you know, what's going on with the, with the tables? Is there empty glasses? There's menus just laying down on, on a plate and stuff like that. I think the more you care about the details is the better the experience you're gonna deliver is. It's the little things. It's the simple ground stuff that makes us successful. And uh, I'll look on social media and I see if like there's appetizers and like sushi rolls with main courses and, and all together. That means the server just came and order fired the whole thing and tried to push the guest out. Uh, also at Poppy Steak, we have a big steak. It's $225. It's a huge steak. It's the Poppy Steak. And I'll see on the table for four. If there's four Poppy Steaks on the table, the server's like so excited. Look at this. I, I sold four Poppy Steaks. No, you ruined that guest experience because you oversold them on something and you just burnt that person. Yeah, you got them that one time, but now I'm not going to get that guest over and over again because no one wants to feel like they're taken advantage of. You could charge a lot of money for something as long as they feel like it's a great value. Mm. I love that. Okay. So I have one um, random question to ask you Great. at the end. Maybe it's not random. Um, I think it's very interesting and exciting, and we want to go really into the detail on this one. So you are on top of everything else that you have just mentioned and managed to mention very quickly, by the way. Um, Did I go too you... fast? I'm sorry. No, no, I'm Australian, and it can never be too fast for me. Okay. So that's okay. But um, you are the experience curator for space perspective. Yes, I'm doing space gastronomy in space. Can you food. tell everybody what that even is? Okay, guys, it's a, it's a zero carbon, it's a capsule that has a space balloon that takes you two hours up very nicely to space. You spend two hours in space and then you descend two hours in a beautiful capsule. It holds eight people. So not only are we doing the, the space gastronomy, we're also gonna do a gecko capsule, a, a poppy steak capsule. So you could have an omakase in space. Kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought you guys might like this one. Okay. Uh, the, first, the first capsule goes up in 12 months. Uh, very excited. And it's called Neptune. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're kind of going where no man's gone before. <laughs> Literally. And it costs $125,000, everybody. And there's, I've heard the first year is sold out. There's a wait list now for the, the second. Yeah, most, you know, a lot of people just bought the full capsule, which is kind of crazy, instead of single seats. Yeah. All right. Because if you're going to go, you might as well go with seven of your friends. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to go, you might as well go. Okay, very good. So your role will be to customise the end-to-end -end experience from the moment you get to NASA's Kennedy Space Centre to the moment you land in the Atlantic right. Ocean and the entire in-flight experience in between. So I'm, like, I asked you about the good time and how sure. you went about approaching that, but how do you go about approaching sending people into space, you know? So it's, again, it's as soon as you get to the rope, as soon as you get to the, to the, to the area to, to go up into space, we, we create a whole experience. We do a food and beverage thing for you there. You go into space, but we have curated menus for you to choose from. You can be plant-based, you can be this, you can be that. <clears throat> and then, of course, the mixology. We do have alcohol, we have mocktails as well that are crazy. And then when you land in the ocean and the, and the beautiful boat picks you up, what's that, what's that experience going to look like? This is something that's going to change your life when you go up to space for two hours, right? So we really want people to embrace that and be able to marinate on that and, and continue the experience as soon as you land. Yeah, 
That's amazing. Have you done it yet? Have you had a no, trial? No, 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 no. But I will be one of the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be one of the first manned ones after they after they've gone a few times. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that they'd all been unmanned by now. I wasn't trying to send you up as a guinea pig, <laughs> David, I promise. Um, we weren't planning to do Q&A. You, you can't, of course. Up? Yeah? Q &A. I, I'm probably going to get in trouble from all of the team for asking no. that live on the spot. But uh, your team and also my team. Do we have a microphone that we can send out into the audience? So funny. I asked about this ahead of time. They go, no, no, no. It's all going to be done on the app. Yeah, and I don't have an app with me. I like, I, the, have, I like this. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. Does anybody have a question? I, I had literally 45 questions here, and we've done all of them. So help me out here, everybody. There we go. We've got an app. Put them oh, in the app. Oh, you got the app. I've got, uh, now I have the app and a mic. So let's do, let's do hybrid, very post-COVID. Come on, everybody. Get those questions going. We need that tick, 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 music. OK, in conversation with David Grootman. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's like a voice from God. Put Hello. Put the app down. Put the Hi. app down. How are you? <laughs> We're going to go old school now. <laughs> going back to your uh, space exploration, what's the capacity like? What's the... Um... So it's called Space Perspective. It's eight people per capsule. Is it... Like, I'm claustrophobic, so I'm thinking... No, no, no. It's <laughs> very... No, no, no. Mixology <laughs> it's not what this. you think. It's very luxurious. The capsule's oh. big. It's, 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 you can walk around. It's, it's like being in a luxury lounge. It's very nice. So with all that you've done, why space? Why, why that frontier? I mean, listen, again, I want to always push the boundaries. And can you, I mean, can you imagine that I'm doing the food and beverage in space? How do you say no to that? <laughs> thank you. Doesn't get okay, much thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll, um, while we're waiting for another question from the audience, we've got down, one down here. There's please. a gentleman back there. Oh, good. There we go. This is good. Very interactive. Can I ask a question while we're coming, we're coming to you, Scott? What is your favorite hotel that you don't own? So, so that's a great question. I, I love the hotel experience. Um, we bought a place at Amanyara in Turks and Caicos because we love that so much. And then uh, I think it's great to, to be able to go to these experiences like an hour away. Also, the Exumas, to me, I think is the coolest place on earth. Okay, that's nice. Very yeah. good. We ready? Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Hi. Big fan of your work. Thanks. So obviously, we know you work with restaurants, hotels, really cool space, balloons and prints. I guess, what's your next vertical? And as a hospitality provider, how do you get closer to a brand person, but on the same token, leverage that all through each different vertical? So, uh, he mentioned prints. I, I, myself and ABG took prints out of, out of, for, out of bankruptcy and, and brought the brand back four years ago. But besides the hospitality business, I do a lot of VC, and I do it with a lot of, a lot of brands that I could pump into my ecosystem, from daring plant-based chicken. Uh, so we have a lot of founders that come to Miami, and I love to invest in stuff that I could put in my places, right? So it's all full circle. So we have a daring plant-based chicken item at every one of my restaurants, from daring plant-based chicken kung pao chicken at, at Komodo, to rice noodles at Gecko, to uh, daring plant-based chicken pot pie at the Key Club. So I find these things that I could, I could put into that. Uh, Olipop soda, Jamama hot sauce, all sorts of cool things. Fly by Jing, chili pepper, uh, chili crisp sauce. So we try to find things that we could constantly, again, cycle through our places. And we could change these founders' lives by new CBG brands to, to pump in. Hmm. OK. Um, what made you pick Dallas to expand? It's a great question. So uh, the developers that are d doing the Deep Elm area of Dallas, where Uber's headquarters is, and it's kind of like the Wynwood or the young professional area of Dallas where everyone's moving to, came to us five years ago and said, we'd love to really do a Komodo over there. So we kind of stalled during COVID, and then coming out of it, we just got it done. And I think Dallas, I talked to people, they sell more Rolls Royces in Dallas than any other city in America, which you should know. And it's also a place where tons of young professionals are now making their home. Uh, and we're excited about doing Dallas. Okay, thank you. Do you have, still have a question, sir? Hey, David. Um, Do you need a mic for the front row? I don't. I don't okay. They might need it for the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry about that. No problem. So, so where do you get your inspiration from? I mean, you know, for some people it's traveling, since we're in this industry, travel. Where, where do you get your inspiration for all these creative ideas? I mean, So I would love to say they're all my ideas. They're not all my ideas. I work with some of the most creative people in the business from Rockwell Design Group or Ken Falk or Raymond Jungles is landscaping architect that's insane. 
Uh, I try to put the best people around me that's possible. What I found is when you, when, you, when you try to save money on the designers and all this stuff, you end up spending way more than you would have if you just went with the best to begin with, with change orders and all that. Um, and I love to try to find the most creative people I can around me. And it's been a, a great formula because as creative as I think I am, I'm not nearly in the same universe as all these people. And that's why I try to get put people around me that'll push me as well to be creative. Great questions, everybody. You're way better at this than I am. Um, one thing you wish every restaurant you don't own would stop doing, and one thing every hotel owner should start doing. So uh, it's hard for me to go to other people's restaurants sometimes when I see what's going on, like exposed rope light or stuff like that. I kind of freak out. Uh, also, I, 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 I just, just checking if you've got I, any. Yeah, <laughs> again, I look at I look at all the details uh, and. Oh, that's a train. Yeah. Oh, my, sorry. <laughs> I thought my time was up. You guys are sorry. It was like the Oscar. Awesome. I was like, thanks for coming. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I don't do the food. I turn down a lot of doing the food and beverage in a lot of people's hotels now because I do know that the food and beverage helps activate the hotel brand. So if I'm going to be the one that's going to activate it and make it come alive, then I want to own that brand. So I miss out on a lot of deals right now because you know, the hotel brands want me inside their places, but. I think for the long haul for me to have brand equity, it's, it's to stay, to do my own food and beverage. Mm. This is an interesting question, I think, to follow up from that. Any deals you've just had to walk away from? Yeah, if I, I, listen, uh, I actually opened up a diner that I had to walk away from uh, on South Beach. It's an old Firestone tire place that I thought was gonna be the coolest thing ever. And I realized after three months that my crowd's not gonna, they went to the diner one time and stuff like that, but they didn't keep going. Mm -hmm. So. You have to know when to not keep putting good money over bad. And at a $30 check average, I could, I could stay open. I just wouldn't make any money. And for me, that's not when I'm here to do business. So I had to close a diner after three months in a beautiful space. And I had the sugar factory taking it over and I'm partnering with them on that one space. But you, you have to know too where if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. And you just can't keep going and you gotta take your ego out of it. Komodo, when I first opened, 150, 200 people would show up, and I was like, wait, I'm the big owner of Live. I'm the, this is me. I, they didn't see me as a restaurateur, so I had to push the food, push everyone there, make sure every DJ that played for me at Live and Story would go and eat dinner, every celebrity would come down there, and now Brickell is a much more bubbling, exciting area. In fact, Gecko is only a block away from Komodo, and Komodo's still going up in numbers, but I knew Komodo was going to work. I had to get the food perfect. I had to get everything right, and I wouldn't be on stage today with you, probably, if Komodo didn't make it. So you have to know. Thank right. you. Uh, Kevin, I think. Oh. Does this work? OK. Hey, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. So I had a question because a lot of what you say to me really sounds about putting a good team together, sure. developing and maintaining that. So what is your secret to success to really bringing the right people together, but also keeping developing and growing them? Well, first of all, you have to show people that there's growth in your company. Otherwise, even the best people, no matter how much you pay them, are not going to stay. Um, I look for very confident people that that, that have a confidence, but the, the main thing that we, we kind of breed with inside our company is to take it personal. And a lot of people say, don't take it personal. You better take it personal. You better take it personal why someone's eating at another restaurant and not ours, why someone's at a different nightclub and not ours. And I think if you take it personal, they all take it personal, they, then they all take ownership in your space, and that's how you're successful. You, uh, we've got, yeah. Hi, um, okay, so I follow all your social media and everything. Thank you. Um, good time, the hotel, I see, you know, it's kind of like a party hotel, but sure. I never see bad reviews about it, which I have four hotels on Ocean Drive, and we have a lot of reviews because of that. Um, what is happening on Miami Beach, especially with the spring break is, right? And what, whatever the city is deciding that they're gonna do starting next year with all the closing and everything, how do you think that is gonna affect us? It does affect you because I never read anything Of course about it affects me at the nightclubs and the restaurants, and I think it just sends a bad, Symbol to, I mean, listen, uh, they, they don't know, they, is it a week or 10 days? I haven't had my attorneys get into it so much yet, but they will. Uh, it's really bad that they closed Miami Beach. I think if they just created, created content for people to be active and do stuff instead of just doing nothing, uh, do the concerts on the beach, do all that stuff they've spoken about. I think that, that, that keeps them busy, keeps people busy, but to tell people don't come to Miami, it's crazy. Sorry. Thank you. Um, you mentioned some locations earlier. We have a question here that says, do you think location is key or do you think a great restaurant can succeed anywhere? So location's always great, but for me, 
the way we're able to leverage with landlords and stuff like that is to be able to go to an area that, and activate that area that they have. And when I went to the design district, it was some furniture stores and some luxury stores, but it was really like you get hit by tumbleweeds over there. So that's, that's where we are able to leverage a great lease and great TI and great everything is by saying, we're gonna come to this area, we're gonna activate it and hopefully it pops and, and, and use us as the flagship for this, for this new area. Mm, okay, that's nice. Do we have any more questions? Raise your hand nice and high so I can see you. Oh, there we go, thank you. Hey, um, just in terms of, of course, you talking about the importance of socials and brand awareness, in terms of you being a, a trendsetter rather than follower, I'm just interested, are, are there any brands that you see as making waves in this space that you would look to replicate in other areas? Hmm. Is there brands in, in the hospitality space? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, you could see, there's a, in each market, there's a great restaurant, there's a great somebody that's doing something different, whether you go to Mykonos, you go to Ibiza, or you go to Rome, or you go to even Fort Lauderdale. I mean, you take parts of, from different people all the time and kind of see what's special. Uh, you know, we do a beef case at Poppy Steak, and I've seen so many people knock that thing off now, it's like crazy to me. But that's the way life is. You take pieces from other places. Uh, but there's so many great young hospitality people that are making insane waves right now. Uh, you know, the Tao group I, is, I'm doing this stuff with, but you know, Major Food Group does great. There's all sorts of great people out there to do. In fact, around the corner, guys, there's a place called Miami Slice where these people are waiting for two hours for a slice of pizza. They do a pizza omakase. Uh, they're Venezuelan, and they, they've met, I've taken the guy from Lucali. I've taken all the great pizza guys there, and they've all freaked out. It's literally one block, they open at five. You guys should really check it out, it's called Miami Slice. But I love to see stuff like that because these guys are setting their own trends. Like you could, I, I just put them at the Fountain Blue in Las Vegas because they're so good. I mean, I think they're unbelievable. But so you're like the Roman to a guide bet for Miami. I'm like, what? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There's, listen, I have a great bagel guy, El Bagel around the corner, stuff like that. You wanna have these kind of guys wherever you go, right? But the Miami Slice guys, they're another level right now. This pizza's crazy. Can someone submit a question which is top 10 things to do in Miami? <laughs> <laughs> or eat, maybe, more specifically. Okay, how have the behaviours of your guests changed pre and post COVID? I mean, you have to understand, guys, we were ripping it during the pandemic in Miami. We were open, we didn't really close that often, and everybody came down here. It was, it was insane. So uh, I think they've calmed down since COVID, which is kind of crazy to say. <laughs> Ripping it, I love that. No, 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 it was, it was nuts. Miami was alive. It's, and I think Miami and Dubai were like the two main cities that people were coming to and really uh, yeah. going nuts. How about, what is the main thing about hospitality in one word? Feeling. You want that person to leave with a great feeling and it's what you feel from hospitality. It's not just giving the dish out. I, keep, I can't stress that enough. Mm. You're the second panelist in a row who said exactly the same thing. So I feel like feeling is our takeaway from this. Uh, how do you manage a bad guest review? I'm going to ignore it for sure. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, listen. No, no. Uh, it's not true. It's not true. We, we try to reach out to that guest to see if we can recover it and if we could kind of bring them back in for a different kind of experience. Uh, the, the thing about the hospitality business is you're only as good as your last meal. And you can have amazing food da, 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 for, for so many times and you have that one thing and, and it's, it's, you have to start all over again. So it's about trying to recover that guest if the, if the experience happened that's poorly. Mm, that's nice. Do we have any more questions in the audience? We've got some juicy ones in the app. We don't have a mic yet though, right? Hi. Um, seeing the labor challenges in the area based upon the fact that your hospitality model requires so much service, Right. how did you deal with the challenges in the workforce, especially in Miami? I'm a native here. And so basically we see the labor shortages in our own hospitality line. So I'm just curious to see how is it that you maintain and continue to be successful in that arena. So what she asked is, you know, with the labor shortages, how do, how do we get through that? And there's a couple of things. First, front of the house is easy for us because they know they're gonna make money. But what we got ahead and done is on, the, on our service charge, which is a gratuity service charge, we've taken a piece of that and we've given it to the back of the house, to the, to the kitchen staff and all that, because listen, in our places you have to go kind of late hours and you have to push harder and harder. And it's kind of not fair that one group is making all the money while the other group doesn't make any of that. So we've made it more even by doing that, by giving the back of the house a, a part of the service charge, which we're a pulled house, has made them work harder and stay longer and stayed with us. 
times do you visit all the businesses that you have? Can have you, you ever gone as a guest? Uh, Thank you oh. so much, please. Sorry. Thank you. How you put the mic down to ask me the question. <laughs> Sorry. It, was a, it was a private question. Okay. How many times do you actually visit your restaurants or your hotels and actually experience it like a guest and not like the owner? So, In disguise. So I don't do undercover boss, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> but I go to one of my restaurants. I try to go at least six nights a week. Uh, I usually take one night a week where I don't go, and I try to go to either a competitor or, or another restaurant. And, uh, right. <laughs> and I think it's important for me to be in the venues. At the end of the day, they, they want to see you. They have to see you. And no one's going to have the attention to detail that you're going to have, as you know, right? And you kind of have to set that tone. Like, they see me picking up trash. You know, if someone asks me where the bathroom is, they see me walking my own guest. I get up from my table, and I walk my guest to the bathroom. Because if I see a server or a manager pointing to the bathroom, I terminate them right away, just so you know that. To me, I show you the way. It's those things that's hospitality, from the start to the finish. But if I don't do it myself, and I, and I, and I don't show them that I'm doing it, then they won't do it as well. OK, final question. I think this is a really nice one. So thank you to Nikhil for submitting it. What's your next step after space exploration? Are we going to underwater submarines, for wow. example? Wow, I would love that. <laughs> little, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to top space. Every time I think I can't top something, though, space comes along or something like that, and it becomes like the Catalina wine mixer. And we, we have a great team. We keep trying to push ourselves. Uh, but thank you so much for having me. Thanks for sitting with me, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, and I hope you come to my spots and check them out. Thank you for your flexibility. Thanks. Thanks. And in general. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you.